the Kristen Omdahl Show. This is episode 1073, and it's also Giving Tuesday. Uh, we're going to do a crochet along today for the summer 2022 crochet along. If you are joining me live, please say hello. I am live here in Southwest Florida in my actual studio inside my RV where I work. Let me turn the volume down on here. There we go. How's everybody doing today? Is everybody having a good day so far? We have a visitor today. <laughs> Baby Bjorn. He wasn't very photogenic in the uh, photo this morning, but that's because he was busy talking to me. Oh. What a sweetheart. And I can read comments better from over here than over there this morning. And I'm just going to wait a few minutes for people to pop over from pre-chat and notifications. Got lots to talk to you about today. Uh, well, not really. I have a couple things I want to mention, including a comment that I just read here a few minutes ago. Uh, but first, let's say hello to everybody. Hi, Karen, Judy, Naomi, Steffi, Grace, Lori, Marsha, Judy, Sharon, Naomi, Grace, Karen, Joe, Donna. Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Happy Giving Tuesday. This is a crochet along Tuesday. I'm going to be working on another version of the Easy Breezy Crochet Shawl. If you have not already downloaded the pattern, you can on my website. It is uh, also 100% um, of the proceeds of this pattern during the crochet along will be donated to charity. And every Tuesday, I will be working on the shawl, talking about the shawl, and you are more than welcome to join me in the crochet along. And you can also uh, talk, another thing that I think is fun to talk about on Giving Tuesday is where we want to donate our shawls or what other types of acts of kindness that we do in our everyday lives. It's not bragging to talk about kindness and the things that you do to be nice to other people. It's inspiration. And for every item or every detail that you share about the things that you do, you plant seeds of inspiration in all of us. So it's always a good idea to share that sort of thing. Uh, let's see, Naomi's crocheting her third Easy Breezy shawl. That's awesome. I made this first one in Lion Brand Mandala, this yarn here, and it was a one ball project. I made this one here, a smaller version of it, as a beaded headscarf in Lion Brand's uh, oh Baby Organic Yarn, which is a number two sport weight organic cotton, and I added uh, beads throughout. You can find videos on how I made both of those and the pattern. It's all the same pattern. Uh, the pattern's available on my website. Judy has shared a link to it. And this morning, as promised, I'm making it in another weight again. So this time I'm using Mandela Watercolors Yarn. This one here, it's a number five bulky weight yarn that has some interesting color changes and I'm really excited to see how this one's gonna change. This color is called Icy Grape, isn't that beautiful? It's got some Heather Oatmeal in there, it's got some light pink and a beautiful uh, vibrant violet in there. I think it's just pretty. So I've done, how many rows have I done so far? One, two, three, four, five. I've done six rows so far with a size eight millimeter crochet hook. Oops, sorry, buddy. <laughs> He's like, get that out of my face. <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> he says, get that out of my face. Hi, Trudy. Hi, Irene. Hi, Grammy Colleen. Good morning, everybody, and thanks for being here. Hi, Francis. Thank you. Yep, this is where uh, this is where I do a lot of crocheting and knitting. I have uh, made a ton of progress on my new book. Sitting at this dinette. I've also been working on my courses. Uh, I have the handout completely done for the second knitting course and uh, just need to start filming that. Oh, 
that's cool. Francis, Francis stays in her RV, his or her, I'm not sure, uh, eight months out of the year and crochets. Very nice. Hi, Mariana. Hi, Sylvia. He says, okay, I approve of this type of petting. This is much nicer than putting that silly yarn in my face. Oh, that's a good boy. That's a good boy. Okay, so what did we say here? One, two, three, four. Okay, I have six rows done so far, and wow, with a number five bulky weight yarn, eight millimeter crochet hook, that's a pretty big piece I've got so far. I dedicated two balls to this. I don't think one ball is going to be enough for a shawl. It is 164 yards per 3.5 ounce ball, which is still a lot for a bulky yarn. However, I think it's going to be two balls to get the size that I want. And I just can't wait to see how many different ways that dark violet's going to pop out in this yarn. So pretty. Yeah. If you have not already followed the link that Judy shared for the Shawls for Sharing page, I highly recommend that you do. We're having a contest throughout the summer crochet along. All you have to do is enter. Uh, there's lots of ways to do it. You can share your email address, which is 100% private, just shared with me. And also, there are a bunch of other ways to add extra entries for more chances to win. There's going to be three prizes chosen at the end of summer or at the end of the quarter. One prize has been generous donated by Lion Brand. They're giving away four balls of this mandala yarn, which is great because you only need one to make the shawl. So the grand prize is four balls of this yarn, roughly $36 value. Then the second prize is donated by me. You can pick, the winner will be able to pick any of my eBooks for free. And then the third prize is also donated by me. And it'll be uh, for uh, the person that wins can choose any pattern that they want on my website. So I won't be choosing, the winner gets to choose, which I think is such a nice touch when, uh, when you can do that. Ah, Grammy made her daughter an afghan in the colorway. I'm guessing she means this one, but she might mean this one. Who knows? Do you mean the watercolor, the mandala watercolor, or do you mean the regular mandala? Either one would make a very yummy afghan, though, I will say. Uh, hi, Anna. Good morning. Okay, when I sat down and just before I went live, I pulled up the screen on my computer and I was able to see some of the pre-chat comments and I want to make a com I want to reply to a even though it wasn't directed towards me I was just reading everybody talking amongst themselves I wanted to say somebody mentioned that they love the hat that I'm wearing but they can't wear hats and I just want to say I used to say the same thing I think that it is seriously just a point of view in the narrative in your head. Everybody can wear hats. Any type of a hairstyle works with hats. It is believing that you can wear a hat that allows you to wear a hat. This goes for wearing dresses. This goes for wearing a head, uh, wearing scarves on your head wearing hoop earrings, wearing whatever. If there's a style that you like, life is too short to not do it. And so I cannot recommend enough that if you like a style, just do it. If something in your head is telling you you can't do it, it is just something in your head. Hats are meant to be worn by everybody. Oh, that reminds me, uh, there's a meme that goes around right before, right at the beginning of summer every year, and it says how to have a beach body. Number one, have a body. Number two, go to the beach, right? If there is a style of bathing suit that you like and you say, oh, I love it, but it's not for me. Yes, it's for you. If it's a style you love. Another yeah, Joe. Yes, it was you, Joe. <laughs> Thank you. I, th oh, I thought it was you, but I didn't want to say the name if it wasn't. And I didn't want to put you on. Uh, I didn't want to. I didn't want to make you uncomfortable either. Uh, so like, remember, I've wanted to wear a pinup bathing suit for years. I love the pinup style. And I always say to myself, oh, but you can't do it. I I am so grateful that I finally said life's too short to say that to myself. And I bought that uh, pinup style bathing suit earlier this year. I feel so good every time I put it on. And no, I don't sit there and admire myself in a full length mirror in it, but I don't need to because 
I have a body and I go to the beach, right? I have a body and I wear a swimsuit. That's all it takes to wear a swimsuit. You have a body and you have a hat, you can wear a hat. It's that simple. And the sooner we can all let go of the narrative in our heads, I think the happier we would be. And please, I suffer from the same stuff. For years, I wouldn't wear a hat for the same exact reason. Uh, so I just wanted to say that. Uh, let's see. Life's too short. Yes. Life's too short to not do all the fun things that you want to do. Okay. Speaking of that, I did want to mention something. This book was um, loaned to me this week. And if anybody needs a great, fast summer read, and this is a genre that you like, Mistress by James Patterson is so fun. So, 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 so fun. I am having such a great time reading this book right now. There's a second author on it, uh, David Ellis, and I've popped it into my Amazon shop if anybody wants a really fun, quick summer read. If you like this style of murder mystery, it is so good. And I think it's the second author that's allowed James Patterson to have so much more information. So the main character in this book, he has... He has a really fast narrative in his head and he speaks really fast and he goes off on tangents with um, <laughs> really detailed trivia from movies and music. So if you like that as well, I think you'll find him hilarious. Um, I like James Patterson to begin with and all I can say is that I'm having a wonderful time reading this. And uh, okay, that's what I wanted to say about that. What else did I want to talk about today? talked about the yarns. What is everybody else thinking about uh, for, has anybody donated any of their shawls yet for this season for the crochet along? Has anybody donated them? Have you donated it to a charity? Have you donated it to a church group? Have you donated it to someone specifically and directly? What, uh, what, what would anybody like to share about that? Oh, I'm crocheting without looking at it. You know, it's funny. I'm really good at knitting without looking, but crochet, not always. Um, but I think with the thicker yarn, it makes it a little easier to crochet by touch because I don't need to look at it right now. Lori made one of the shawls, one of the Easy Breezy shawls for her daughter's partner. That's wonderful. I'm not going to donate mine until the end of summer because I want to show them on display every Tuesday when we're doing the Giving Tuesday, but uh, at the end of summer I will. And I think I'll just uh, wait and see. You know, sometimes someone walks into your life and you realize that it's the person that you need to give something special to. And so sometimes charity projects can be donations to people that you actually have met in real life. And sometimes they're given to a charity who then donates where you don't actually get to meet the actual recipient of your donation. Either way is good. There. That's exactly my point. Judy was saying she she has intentions to share uh, with a favorite charity of hers that helps families in need, but now she has two friends who need to have surgery. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Sometimes things come up where you realize there's somewhere else that uh, your heart speaks to you and tells you to donate to, and that's okay. Ah, Lori's donating one to her uh, a shop. Sylvia donated to um, a young lady going back to school for a teaching degree. Is that what it said? A teaching degree. Wonderful. Uh, yes, Francis. It's called the Easy Breezy Crochet Shawl Pattern, and you can find it on my website. And Judy has posted links in the live links here, but you can also find it in the video description after your show. After the show, I'm reading and talking. Sometimes that doesn't work. And it doesn't have to be this shawl either. The whole point of this is for all of us to come together and bring more momentum and bring more um, energy to giving. 
So it can be my pattern. It doesn't have to be. It can be uh, regarding or related to domestic violence. It doesn't have to be. I think the whole point in doing this as a community and as a group is to just bring more energy and bring more love to the act of giving. I think that it brings momentum in our individual lives. I think it also ripples out to the people around us. Anytime you can do something positive in numbers, I feel like it does bring more energy to positivity. So that's my point, and that's the whole point of why I do this. It doesn't have to be crochet either. That's right, Judy. It can be knit. It can be sewn. It can be woven. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. The whole point is for all of us to get together and, you know, spread more love and spread more kindness and just be more giving. That's wonderful, Marjorie. I'm sure she will. Another thing uh, that I wanted to mention is that sometimes it's important to think about what kind of yarn you want to use when you're giving something to charity. And this also applies when you're giving something as a gift. Sometimes you have to, I, I think it's important to consider the lifestyle of who you're giving it to. Is it somebody that is very familiar with handmade items? Is it somebody that has great attention to detail in their, or is somebody that you think would be willing to hand wash something? Or are you gifting to people that you think are going to need something that's machine washable and dryable? Or, you know, those types of things. So I think it's really important to consider who you're giving something to and what you think is going to be a smart maintenance style for them. I don't know if that's the right way to say it or not. But like, let's say you're giving, a, for example, let's say there's a, a, a new mom that you want to give a baby blanket to. Are you going to make it in cashmere and tell her she has to hand wash it every time for her new baby? Maybe not, right? Now, if it's somebody that you know would appreciate a handmade cashmere afghan and would be willing to hand wash it, yes, that's a great gift idea. But when it's not, uh, but when you think it's not a practical solution for somebody, I think it's really important to think about the laundering care. The good news is, Almost every yarn label in the world will tell you right on there what the washing instructions are. I think it's really important. To, I think that's a really important factor to consider when gifting anything. Uh, oh, thank you, Skyla. Skyla Teresa, thank you. I'm glad you are here. Where are you? Where is it? 1 a.m. right now. Where are you talking from? Oh, that's so cute, Sylvia. Yes, you've got my love to keep you warm. That's wonderful. Hi, Patsy. Happy Tuesday. I've missed a bunch of comments. Yes, Judy, the butterfly effect is a great example. That's exactly what I'm envisioning about giving Tuesdays and doing these crochet alongs or make alongs or knit alongs. Maybe we start calling it a make along because I really don't want to alienate anybody. I want anybody who has a desire to join us to feel welcome here. So it's Tuesday make-alongs. And uh, yes, the butterfly effect, that's wonderful. Hello, Starlight from Romania. That's awesome that you're here too. <laughs> Bjorn is just fast asleep now. Can you, you guys can't see his face, can you? But you can see him just sleeping away. <laughs> oh, I think I'm coming up to another purple spot in my ball of yarn. I see a purple spot coming. I can't wait to see what kind of pattern it makes in the yarn. So this isn't really a striped yarn like the regular mandala. Oh, sorry, sugar. So the mandala yarn truly made stripes in the shawl, and I would like to show it to you uh, up close. Yes, I have two slide outs. If you see behind me, this is the length of the slide out here. This, the whole dinette here where I'm sitting, this slides out by, what is that, 16 inches or so? 
Thank you, Naomi. He is cute and he's so sweet. Oh my gosh, that reminds me. Uh, I got a gift a while ago and Bjorn didn't like it at first, so I was going to return it. And it turns out after yesterday, I think we're gonna keep it. This is a baby sling. <laughs> And I put Bjorn in it yesterday. The day we got it, he didn't like it. He didn't like it for a couple of days, and I gave up on it. <laughs> yesterday, I put him in this. I think he sat in it for 20 minutes. He sat here with me while I was rocking him and pet, petting him. And then <laughs> I took him for a little walk outside in it, too. Then we came back inside, and he sat in it a little longer. Yeah, he was in it for at least 20 minutes. So I'm saying, I'm thinking we're going to try it again. Yes, he decided he likes it now, Judy. At least yesterday he did, so I'm not going to return it after all. <laughs> oh, Sandra's been petting Bjorn on the screen. That's so sweet. Ooh, that's a great idea, Donna. Yes, putting treats inside it. Okay, so I wanted to show you how beautifully this yarn transitioned in the stripes. Not all stripe yarn is the same. Sometimes it's very distinctive differences between the stripes. And I wanted to show you how subtly, it's not super subtle. It's still, it still is a distinctive stripe. But do you see how gradual the color changes? I was really surprised at how beautifully the colors were chosen in here. It's not a really sharp stripe line, and I thought that was a surprise. I expected it to be a sharp stripe line, and I don't think it's that stripe. I, that's, I think it's a little more subtle because of the colors chosen. They're very close on the color wheel through here, and I thought that that was really beautifully, really beautifully planned. See, it looks more like stripes in here, but I think it turned out really, really pretty. I just love the way it turned out. The color's called Troll, and I don't really love the name of the color. because I think it's because of, you know, because of where I, because of, do I lick my shawls? I'm guessing you mean block my shawls, and yes, I do. Yes, I do. Uh, and here's my, here's my viewpoint on blocking shawls and blocking anything else that you wear. Uh, it's part of the laundering process, right? When you add, when you add water to something, it, to get out the dirt and sometimes we add soap and there's different types of soap to use uh, but it is important that you know how something reacts to water because if you're going to wear it on your skin and wear it when you eat and wear it when you sweat uh, you're gonna need to wash it anyway <laughs> oh that's so sweet Lori yes definitely yeah, Judy, uh, Judy and I will uh, up update with those links. I don't know where, I don't have the link for it right now, but we can figure out the link after the show. Sweet baby. Yeah, putting treats in there might help. I agree. Although he isn't big on treats like his brother was. Bjorn, Bjorn likes to eat first thing in the morning. He likes to eat around 5 p.m. And... Um, he doesn't get dazzled by treats like his brother did. Oh, that's so nice, Lori. Yes, yeah, so this one was washed and then laid flat to dry, which is another way of saying that it was blocked. Block is a word that I feel like we used to say lay things flat to dry <laughs> when I was a kid. We didn't use the word blocked, but that is what you're doing. You're blocking it. You're getting the shape that you, you know, your uh, while it's wet, you're shaping it, you know, making sure that it's the size and the shape that you wanted it to be and then letting it dry. Yes, that's a great idea too, Judy, if everybody could share where they're donating. I think that if we could grow the list of places that accept handmade donations as well as just sharing with more ideas for everybody to be inspired by. Um, great, Francis. Yep, 
Yes, you can add photos of your shawls and what you're working on in the forums as well. We have a couple of threads already started about charity and donation and shawls for sharing and the crochet along. So all you have to do is head over there, be logged into your account at the time, and it's 100% private and it's a place where we can keep the party going throughout the day and inspire each other further with more photos and stuff. That's a great idea. Woo. I think it's going to be really interesting to compare these two shawls, or these three shawls actually, when this one is done, because then we'll have done it in number two sport weight, number three DK weight, and number five chunky weight. Would you like to see this shawl worked up in other weights as well? I was thinking to, um, let me go grab a ball of this because it's really special. I think it's special. Let me go grab one. Would you like to see it worked up in a ball of this Lion Brand Respun Thick and Quick? This is the number six super bulky yarn, and I think this would be really lovely as the shawl as well, especially if you're going to make it a little bit bigger for the colder weather. See how thick that is? And I'll even compare it with the five. So the five I'm working with right now is super cozy, and there it's this thick. Look at how much thicker that one is. This is so cozy. So I was thinking that maybe next I'll do this as well, and then we can compare and contrast all the different sizes as well. Yeah, that would be beautiful for fall. This one will be too. This one will be too. And fall's around the corner, guys, you know that. Bjorn says, just let me sleep. I don't care. I don't care. Just let me sleep. <laughs> Sweet baby. Yes, Beth, shawls are great to donate to assisted living places. Yes, it, regardless, uh, like if someone could be bedridden, someone could be in a wheelchair, it doesn't matter. It just goes over the shoulders. That's a great donation to uh, assisted living places. I agree. Yeah, Patsy, I think it's going to be fun to show the comparisons. Absolutely. And even compare, like, how, what, how many... Okay, let me give you an example. So this one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. This one's 19 rows. Let's see how big this one is. How many rows is this one? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Well, here's, okay, here's an example. 19 rows in this shawl takes you all the way down here. 19 rows in this one, look how much smaller that is. Isn't that just cool as a comparison in itself? This is 19 rows or that's 19 rows, depending on what size yarn and what size hook you use. Isn't that great? It's the same pattern. So when something's top-down construction, you actually have the instructions to make so many different amazing things. You can make from one pattern, you can make a regular traditional shawl or a headscarf or a poncho by if you made two and sewed them together, or a square afghan by sewing two together. Okay. Wendy, what's your question? I have some cocoon cardigans on my website. You could find them there. Also, crocheting two of these together is a square. You could turn that into a cocoon cardigan as well. And when I make two of these and show them uh, assembled, we'll be able to talk about all the different types of projects you can make when you have two of them from a poncho, a ruana, a, a cape, and also a cocoon. Great point. We can do that with this pattern too. Uh, oh yes, and if you are a, one of my Patreon subscribers and you are level two and higher, you have been sent an email for our behind the scenes once a month live stream that'll be tomorrow at noon. It's every fourth, it's the fourth Wednesday of every month at noon 
I do it the same time every month to make it easy to remember. And every month I send a message out to everybody who qualifies for that level um, to get an invitation to join me. And we'll be doing something behind the scenes tomorrow. I'm not going to say what, uh, but if you are level two and higher on Patreon, you have received the link already and the invite. And I will see you tomorrow at noon. Welcome, Wendy. I'm glad you're here. All right. Well, thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me. I hope you enjoyed watching Bjorn sleep. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed talking about the different yarns, the different weights, the, and how different one pattern can look with different things. I hope you enjoyed talking about charity and paying it forward and doing kind things to other people. I know I love getting to hear everybody else's creative ideas on how they give back in their communities. It's such an inspiration to me as well. So thank you so much for sharing. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.